with a 2011 Honda Insight EX and this car has 110,000 miles uh, it's in this ruby red metallic color um, as you can see you know this is a hybrid so you're gonna have this the blue the blue accents throughout the headlights on both sides here that kind of accentuate the hybrid and you know technology that Honda put into this car so this car I believe is based on the fit platform at least from the A pillar forward it uses the same structure as the fit um, but it combines a 1.3 liter gasoline engine with an electric motor situated between the engine and the transmission in the front um, so I said it has the same structure as the fit in the front end of the car and then from the back it's unique to the insight so over here I believe these are well these look like 15 or 16 inch alloy wheels and this is an EX so it comes with the alloys the LX and the base model come with steel wheels that have hubcaps the car is a little dirty but um, the car has held up fairly well for how old it is it actually has hundred ten thousand miles for a 2011 vehicle so as we go around the car here you can see the antenna is mounted up here on the roof it's very small for good aerodynamics and it still has this wedge shaped profile like a Prius um, it, that's its direct competitor but this car undercut the price quite a bit for that for that model year in 2011 from 2010 to 2015 it has LED brake lights and the blue hybrid emblem on the back so we'll start out by taking a look at the cargo hold it's a hatchback design just like the Prius probably be a good idea if I unlock the car first Let's see I'll show you the keys it's just a really basic key as we go into the cargo hold here you can see it has a decent amount of room but it's not as big as your average sedan's trunk um, it just has a very good amount of you know ability to throw stuff in there without uh, hitting anything when you throw it in. That's the benefit of a hatchback design. There's a little grab handle up here that you can pull down and to shut it. And it shuts down pretty easily because of the, the weight. So let's take a quick look at the back seat here. Um, it doesn't have a very big back seat at all to be honest. Uh, the Prius is going to be a little bit bigger than this car. And the overall comfort, I think these seats are pretty low to the ground, so you don't get a lot of thigh support when you're sitting in them. But you have grab handles all the way around. And this car is, is fairly loud on the road, just on my brief experience, it has a decent amount of road noise, but that's pretty normal for a Honda or Acura product. And in the back we have hard touch materials all the way around. Uh, this, is, this is a little bit like carpet material, very thin carpet material it feels like. Uh, you have a power window, um, your locks right here but nothing too fancy. And when you shut the door, it's not, it's a very tinny sounding car to be honest with you. But then again, this car retailed for about $21,000, which was a few thousand dollars less than an equivalent Toyota Prius. So we shut the door here, makes a pretty bad rattle in there. And even if the rattle wasn't there, this car doesn't sound very expensive at all. And it, and it, is, and it isn't, um, you know, I compared this to the Hyundai Sonata earlier and this car definitely feels cheaper than that car. Um, so you have hard touch materials right here. You have this kind of this, ew, it's not a very good looking um, material right here. It's like hard, scratchy, carpet-like, thin carpet-like material. You have an auto up and down switch for the driver's window there, but they're all uh, standard power windows for the rest of the rest of the car. You have an eco button right there. Um, and I'll explain that in a second and what that does. So when we start it up, you know, it's just a normal key, even in the EX. Gauges come to life, they're all digital. And when you do, if it's cold outside and you start the car, um, this car actually will fire up the engine right away like it did just there. So this has 110,000 miles and it's, it's held up really well on the highway. There's not a lot of rattles or squeaks except for this door rattle, which is only heard when you actually go over a big bump or when you shut the door itself. The cool part about the EX model is it actually has paddle shifters for the CVT transmission right here. So you can get the most out of that 98 horsepower um, electric motor and gasoline 1.3 liter engine combined. This car will do about 10.3 seconds to 60 and a little under 18 seconds on the quarter mile. So it's right on par with the Prius for 2010 to 2015 as far as the power goes. Um, for the for the fuel economy, this car gets a little bit less than the Prius. It's I think it's 4144 for its EPA City and Highway MPG. This car, we can go through here. This is how you switch between all your um, your different display settings in your instrument cluster. So you can press the up arrow 
you can see we got 110,000 miles in the outside temperature. And the average that this, the guy that I'm reviewing the car from is getting about 39 miles to the gallon, which is probably about five less than an equivalent Prius in uh, the same type of driving. So it kind of scrolls through. You can see like how the person was driving over time. Um, Eco guide helps you gauge whether or not you're driving efficiently. And uh, it, it also shows you when you're using battery or when you're using engine. So right now we're actually using most of the engine, we're actually using gasoline to keep this car running. So yeah, this car um, does have an airbag problem, I believe, which is not too great, but you can have all these different display settings here and the gauge cluster glows blue around the edge here. You can see it's blue on both sides of the tachometer and you can see that that will glow green if you're driving efficiently or blue if you're driving more aggressively. Up here you got your speedometer and it gives you a little eye there information which means like you know there's something you need an oil change, you need some maintenance and you have an airbag problem like this car does. And this eco button here, if you press the eco button you can see a little leaf shows up here in the instrument cluster and that pretty much says you know we're going to dial back the throttle response and the CVT transmission is going to shift a little bit early, it's not going to be very aggressive. Um, it also reduces the power in normal driving by about 4% but it actually will give you full power if you if you floor the gas pedal, it'll still give you full power no matter what. So here's the dashboard layout right here. Um, you have an automatic climate control setting right here. Let's turn on the lights. On all Japanese cars, pretty much, the lights are located up here. So, there we go. Automatic climate control setting. I like the interior colors of this car. They have this, this blue look to them, and I think it looks, it looks really nice. You know, the car really emphasizes the hybrid appeal by having these blue and green gauges all over. So right here we have your AC controls, you have your automatic climate controls right here, you have your recirculation mode, your fresh air mode. Uh, this will do your heated uh, windshield, or your back windshield I should say, and also heated side mirrors. And you have your front defrost right here and you can turn the whole system off by pressing that button there. You also have, a, I believe it's a six disc, no you have six presets for the radio. You also have a single in-dash CD player with RDS, so you have your radio data system, so that way you can see like what kind of music you're listening to, what the name of the song and the artist is. And you also have all your different controls right here for your entire system. Radio controls over here, and then you have an aux cord that comes with the car as well, so you can play anything for your iPod or your Android device. The mirrors up here are not lit, unfortunately, but that's the car is a little bit a little bit cheaper, so you're not going to have some of those interesting features. But you got dome lights up here that work. You also have a dome light up here for the backseat passengers, and you have grab handles all the way around the vehicle. It's a little dark in here, but there are grab handles that are damped all the way around the vehicle. And these these seats are really comfortable, even though they're just the cloth seats. But um, there's there's leather available on a higher trim level above this EX. So overall, comfort's really good. It's a little noisy as far as wind and road noise on the highway with with road noise predominating. Um, and it does have a few, it doesn't have very many rattles and squeaks, but it's held up really well for 110,000 miles. So overall, I think it's a great car. I would definitely compare this to a Prius though, because I think that the Prius offers quite a lot for the money and it feels a little bit more substantial than this vehicle. Um, the other part that I want to emphasize is you have the stability control button here, but if you just press it, it won't automatically turn off. You gotta hold it for about a second, then it beeps and gives you a light. And to turn it off, you can't just press it either. You have to hold it for a second, then it shuts off. So, yep, this is all, this is the 2011 Honda Insight. And it's a very good looking car. I think on the outside, I think it could use a little bit better interior fit and finish on the inside. But then again, it's a $21,000 car. And in fact, this car was actually the cheapest hybrid sold in America starting in 2010. So that's definitely what it has going for it. It's the, it's the cost of, ownership of this car is really low, it's very reliable, um, and it also has a pretty decent, I think it looks better than a Prius on the outside, and in this metallic ruby red color, I would say that it's, it's a definite buy if you're looking for efficiency and as well as similar performance to a Toyota Prius. So I hope you enjoyed this review today, and let me know in the comment section below if you have any suggestions for future videos, or if you have any questions about this 2011 Honda Insight EX. Thanks. Bye.